Welcome back, Canaanites. Thursday, as I was pumping out the Spartan Generations video, Grimm dropped the latest community update, which gave us our first taste of the next two leaders coming to Halo Wars 2, Jerome 092 and Ripa Morami, the Arbiter. Starting with Jerome, you may recall my musings about what 343 would do with him given that he's already a playable unit under Captain Cutter. Well, now we know. It seems that Jerome has been promoted to the role of Acting Commander, a formality but one that accurately describes his role. Along with this role seems to have come some upgrades as we can see here. Jerome now sports some likely Gen 2 inspired additions, along with what can only be described as a Chain Hydra. I'd like to imagine this is what George would look like if he'd survived past Reach. As an interesting side note, the additional armor kind of reminds me of the extra armor pieces that Lasky wore in Halo 4, which were notably absent in Halo 5. I can't help but wonder if second in commands are expected to take more active roles in combat operations, but maybe I'm reading too much into things. Anyway, a notable change to Jerome, you know, other than his looks, is that while he can no longer hijack vehicles, he can call in a personal Mantis mech with his mech drop ability. Nicknamed Theseus, this command mech features shields, twin high-energy lasers, and acts as a mobile command post and line breaker, perfectly complementing Jerome's leadership style. This Mantis is also linked to the Spirit of Fire's command and control Nexus relays, providing additional situational awareness to Jerome and serving as a backup battle net should the Spirit be crippled. Next, let's examine some of Jerome's new units, starting with the M650 Mastodon. Insert your Power Rangers joke here. Mastodons were large vehicles once used by the UNSC Army and Colonial Defense Forces as mobile troop garrisons of sorts. Though slow, they provided incredible protection against even heavy weaponry. Given the limited supply of troops, Jerome has insisted on their manufacturing to provide better protection for their soldiers. We finish up Jerome with the Pièce de Résistance, Spartan Group Omega or Omega Team if you prefer. Fans will remember these Spartans from Halo Wars 1's announcement trailer and their brief appearance in Halo Wars 1 itself. We never really knew much of anything about these Spartans, but that changes today with the introduction of three Omega Team members. From left to right, we have Robert 025 with his plasma cannon, August 099, a crack shot with the railgun, and Leon 011, outfitted for CQC with his energy sword. During the Covenant War, Omega was a rapid response team, taking the fastest transport available to worlds under Covenant attack. There, they'd either buy time for the UNSC to respond or evacuate, and enforce classified last stand protocols. During the war, they often worked with Red Team, making one wonder if Omega Team were fixed up washouts like Red Team. Further, it seems that Omega Team survived the war, though their presence in Halo Wars 2 is entirely non-canonical. I don't know about you, but I am hyped to get my hands on Jerome, and more importantly, the Phoenix Logs that will accompany him and his units. I'm not expecting too much, but any details on Omega are more than welcome. Moving forward, we get Ripa Morami, the Fierce Arbiter from Halo Wars 1. Though dead, the article speculates that Atriox likely could have persuaded Ripa to join him, given Ripa's disregard for traditional Sunghealy standards. I'm not entirely sure if I agree that Ripa could have been persuaded, but it's an interesting proposition, if nothing else. Anyway, Ripa will be getting some new units, and today we focus on two, starting with the Enforcers, battle-hardened, fast-moving Sunghealy armed with plasma rifles, casters, and grenades. They specialize in hit-and-run tactics. The second new unit is the Banished Phantom, which to me looks pretty damn amazing. It still has that iconic Phantom silhouette for the most part, but like any Banished vehicle, has some extra brute flair. These Phantoms also act as mobile garrisons, allowing players to load them with troops who can fire from the safety of the gunship. Both Jerome and Ripa will be available later this month, so probably this upcoming week. They'll be included with the Season Pass for $5.99 each for individual purchase, or as a bundle for $9.99. The firefight gameplay I've had playing in the background was posted on the Halo channel when this update went live. Links are in the description for the footage if you haven't seen it. Moving on, the next big piece of news was the official cover art and description for Halo Retribution by Troy Denning. December 2553. Less than a year after the end of the Covenant War, a string of violent incidents continues to threaten the tenuous peace in human-held space, culminating in the assassination of UNSC Fleet Admiral Grace Lintua and the abduction of her family. It is a provocation so outrageous that the Office of Naval Intelligence must retaliate swiftly and fiercely, but only after its operatives identify her killer and rescue the hostages. This mission will be the first for homicide detective turned Oni operative Vita Lopez and her young team of Spartan Threes, and something feels wrong from the start. The obvious suspect is an infamous brute who leads the Keepers of the One Freedom, an ex-Covenant splinter group in fierce opposition to the UNSC. 
But Lopez and her team soon realize that the truth is much more insidious than they could have ever imagined. And with Fred 104, Kelly 087, and Linda 058 of Blue Team for combat support, they must stop a plan hatched in the bowels of the secret research station Argent Moon, a plan so sinister it could destroy all those still reeling from 30 years of intergalactic conflict. Sounds like an exciting story, and I'm always up for more Veda and the Ferret's action. Plus, we get to see more of Caster, leaders of the Keepers of the One Freedom. Caster was a very interesting character, and the Keepers are probably my favorite post-war Covenant faction. For those who don't know or don't remember, the Keepers are a brute-led faction that still believes in the Great Journey and further, actually accepts humans into their ranks, so that's pretty damn cool if you ask me. Blue Team is also coming back, and I hope we get to see more of Kelly and Linda during the Blue Team sections. It was great to really get to know Fred in depth during Last Light, but I do hope that Kelly and Linda get to shine this time around. But, what has really caught people's attention is the mention of Argent Moon, which you may remember was the setting for Halo 5's second level, Blue Team. In that level, Blue Team finds the missing Oni research station, and the dialogue implies that this is their first time there. What do we know about Argent Moon? Oni research station. Went dark 19 months ago. Last week, Kigyar scavengers found it and sold the find to Julem Dama's people. We cleared it. So, is Retribution introducing a plot hole? We'll have to wait and see, ultimately, but I don't think so. We don't know that Blue Team actually visits Argent Moon in the book, and even if they do, we don't know how much they see and experience. So, I don't think there are any major plot holes to worry about. Swinging back to the cover, let's examine it. In the foreground, we see two individuals. We have what is almost certainly Caster with his blue gold armor that defines the Keepers, and in front of him, an individual in spy armor. My guess, given the Magnum, is that this is Veda Lopez. Remember, spy armor doesn't require the user to be augmented, it's basically super ODST armor. In Halo Ghost of Onyx, we do see a few instances of non-augmented personnel using that armor, notably when Franklin Mendez actually wears a suit during the Battle of Onyx. If this is indeed Veda, she's certainly changed her look since last life, but it's a new look I'm digging. And in the background, we can see a new Oni aircraft that Grimm has identified as a Turaco. We know nothing about it now, but I can't wait to see it in action. Halo Retribution comes out on August 29th, literally a day before I leave for PAX. That pretty much wraps up the canon-relevant stuff from the update, but before we go, let's talk about Loot Crate. The Halo Reach crate releasing very soon will be the last of the first series of crates, and the new series kicking off in September will start with Halo 4. Given what we've seen in past crates, I'm really hoping to get some solid intel on the Chief's armor makeover, and or some intel on the interactions between the Didact and Jewel Dama. Whatever the case, I can't wait. That's it for today. Thanks for watching as always, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you.